I want to thank you all very much. My being here before lunch today, I had a talk with Congresswoman Johnson and Mayor McNamara and 11 other distinguished citizens of New Britain. And uh, I know that some were Republicans and some were Democrats, and they represented many occupations and backgrounds. And uh, we had a good discussion, and I got to straighten out some things that I thought might be <laughs> not straightened out in some people's minds. Uh, I don't know whether we agreed on everything. Everyone was very polite, but I think, I think we do agree on the principles of economic freedom that all of us cherish. And uh, while we were there, I couldn't help being reminded of a story. A lot of things remind me of stories these days. Uh, I'm a I'm a collector of stories, I really am, that I can verify are told by the Soviet citizens among themselves. They reveal that they have a sense of humor, but also that they have a certain kind of cynical outlook on their system there. 
And uh, these stories give you an idea on what they're thinking. And this one's just very brief. It's about two Soviets who are talking to each other. And one of them asked, what's the difference between the Soviet Constitution and the United States Constitution? And the other one said, that's easy. The Soviet Constitution guarantees freedom of speech and freedom of gathering. The American Constitution guarantees freedom after speech and freedom after gathering. <laughs> We had a lively discussion there, though, and as the mayor can attest, and today on the city steps, I'll be asking New Britain to join a great national discussion, the kind that our founders launched 200 years ago when they drafted our Constitution and submitted it to the people for ratification, the kind that the 14 of us had were having a few minutes ago. If we didn't agree on everything, well, neither did the generation that gave us the Constitution. But I'm here today because I believe that the outcome of this discussion will determine the strength and health of our nation and what it stands for in the decades to come. I'll be talking out there about what I hope will be among the most important legacies of my presidency, the Economic Bill of Rights. Now, you've heard a lot about this from our critics. On one hand, uh, they say it's a ploy, something I've cooked up to distract attention from whatever, I don't know, but... <clears throat> <laughs> On the other hand, they say little that's new here, which I guess means it's made up of things that I believed in and fought to achieve for years, and now I'm working to make certain that America doesn't lose all that we've done. But it can be one or the other, not both, and I'll plead guilty to the second charge. I went to Washington to do a job, lower taxes, restore our defenses, cut the size and intrusiveness of government, tune up the carburetor and step on the gas of the greatest engine against poverty and for opportunity in the history of man, the free enterprise system of the United States of America. We've achieved a great deal of that. We still have a government that spends too much and a deficit that's too large. As long as we have those, we can't be sure that the growth that we've enjoyed these last four and a half years will continue. Today, I'll talk about the way that things were before I came into office and the way they are now, and about the role of economic freedom and the opportunities that America offers all peoples. But I thought I'd make one especially important point to you. It's about poverty. In the years before we elected, the breakdown of our economy hit the poor the hardest. Between 1979 and 1980, in the years before we were elected, the breakdown of our economy hit the poor the hardest. The poverty rate soared, growing at the fastest rate even as three million people were pushed into poverty in that brief time. With our recovery, that rise has been stopped and poverty has dropped at the fastest pace in 15 years. Although today New Britain's unemployment rate is 3.9 percent, which is very much lower than the national <laughs> Gentlemen, the President of the United States. Uh, Mr. President, quitters, we never lost our belief in ourselves or in our country. We kept up our chins and our hopes, and we decided 
that we were going to make our city again, Mr. President, and so very proud of our city. There is a renewed feeling of optimism about our tomorrows. Buildings are going up and unemployment is going down. Of the United States has come calling, and we could not be happier. <laughs> you know, this great new boat is the greatest band playing, flag waving, popcorn and cotton candy Main Street West Valley celebration ever since River City was a babbling brook. <laughs> some of the folks in Congress who wanted to vote against it. Again, the congressman listened, and then when the fellow was done, he leaned back and said, you're right, you're right, you're absolutely right. So when the fellow left, the congressman's wife went in, and she said, that first man wanted you to vote for the bill, and you said he was right. Asked why, of all the cities in the country, I'm starting here in New Britain. Well, it's just that New Britain is the place to be. Inflation was splitting so fast that just about every time you shop for groceries or stop for gas, prices had gone up. And whenever the family made a little extra to keep up with the rising cost of living, Washington took extra in taxes and you ended up with less. But young couples had to forget the American dream of owning their own homes. Between high taxes and high like enterprise zones, when Congress, when Congress blocked our enterprise zone for oil, Connecticut and New Britain got started on their own, and we are standing in the enterprise zone right now. Our economic expansion in American history, well, will be the longest economic peacetime expansion in that American history. Because of that, that more people have held jobs this year than ever before in our history. Yes, a bigger proportion. I have to learn, I don't know whether you know, that the potential employment pool of America is considered to be everybody, male and female. In other words, do you want to go on to a future of more growth, more jobs, and more opportunity? Yeah! You know, I saw recently a scholar of our country who happens to speak fluent Russian was going on a visit to Russia. He was in a cab going to the airport. It's a true story. And the cab driver was quite young. He decided yet. Well, by coincidence, when he got off the plane in Moscow and got in a cab, he had another young fella driver. And the young fella said, they haven't told me yet. <laughs> There's a difference in what we're talking about. <laughs> Economic independence and growth. Just as our political freedoms need protection, and that's what the Economic Bill of Rights is all about. The fee
That's just what I mean to do. You know, when I talk like this, it gets some up on Capitol Hill, not under the collar. The way they put it, forgive me, give them hell. I just told them the truth and they thought it was hell. <laughs> As part of protecting our economic freedom, we, the American people, have a right to the truth about federal spending. A line item veto. <laughs> the Economic Bill of Rights will also say that if a federal government wants And to make sure that Congress doesn't use a balanced budget amendment as an excuse for raising...